Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Forbes and I'm a forest ecologist. I had a question from one of my channel subscribers recently about enrichment planting, um, you know, how to do it. So I thought what better way, rather than try and give a reply, why not do a demonstration in our own garden? So here we go, we're going to show you step by step how to go through enrichment planting into a young planted forest. The forest you're going to see today, if you've already seen the um, earlier video on the channel, you would have seen the little area that we established down the bottom um, about four years ago. So we're going to go down there now and go step by step through how to do enrichment planting. So come with me and let's go do some enrichment planting. Okay, so we've come down into the into our young forest. Um, so as I said, this forest is about four years old. The kanuka is about three to four meters tall, so it's done pretty well. Um, and it's largely kanuka that's made made the canopy at this point, which is good because look, we've got these really quite sheltered, shady conditions. So we've developed a microclimate, um, uh, which is crucial. But um, what isn't good is there's a high level of competition here. So even, even this little guy here, this is one of the kanuka that we planted and it's just been completely shaded. It's you know, not even half the size of the others and there are a few natives that have, um, have, are just being suppressed. So the point of enrichment planting is to reintroduce tree species that can't make it on their own, can't be recruited into these forests on their own. So today um, I'll be planting titoki into this area and the nearest natural titoki will be kilometers away in natural forest. So there's very little chance of that making it here and establishing um, on its own. So that's why we intervene by planting into the shelter, into conditions which mimic the right sort of conditions for titoki, which needs a bit of shade. If we plant a titoki with the initial plantings, it, um, it would have struggled. It's just too too exposed for it. So it's going to be much um, happier now that it's got some some tree friends here to to grow with. So you can see it's a really dense stand uh, with the plantings at such close spacing, which, like I said, has been really good in that we've achieved canopy cover quickly, which is important, so that we've got nice microclimate. We're no longer worried about light demanding weeds here. Um, but now's, now's the time to intervene to get some longer lived trees going through enrichment planting. So now let's create a bit of space for this titoki. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, cut some kanuka out to make enough space for their titoki so that it's not going to be shaded so that it gets enough light and it's going to grow up and join the canopy. And what I'm going to do is cut out, I've identified two kanuka, they're spaced just over a metre apart and I, I, um, I think that's going to be an adequate gap. The way I think about it is um, if you've got a say a three metre tall kanuka canopy um, to preserve the microclimate but still create a gap you don't want to go you want to be between half the height of the canopy or the full height. So you want to create a gap about a metre and a half to three metres in diameter. Okay, So you could think about it as a ratio, 0.5 to 1 times the canopy height. So I'm going to step, through, step you through this now. Okay, so when you create a gap like this, you don't want to make it too big to start with. You'd be better, better to make it too small because you can always make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to start by taking out this kanuka here. Okay, so I've just cut that off at ground level. I know it seems like a waste and a bit of a shame, but I'm going to leave this down here and it's just going to rot down and form part of the ecosystem still. Okay, so we're just making space for some longer lived trees. So lay this down over here for now. All right, look, straight away I can feel there's a lot more sunlight coming in already. Um, just measure the gap that's been created. It's about 1.5 metres across. Okay, um, now if we bring the seedling that we're going to plant into this space, you now you can see it's really has taken the place of that kanuka that was cut out. Um, and so it's a bit of a judgment. 
it depends I think on how much maintenance you want to do you know I think you could plant this here and just keep these trimmed to keep the growth going or you could potentially take out another carnauba to create more space for now I've got another one, there's another Kanuka very close behind this one, so what I'm going to do is also take this Kanuka out and that'll create a nice big space that we don't have to maintain too much. So that leaves us with a gap It's a gap about 2 metres across So we've got a canopy of 3 metres So we're within that 0.5 to 1 ratio of diameter to canopy height So I'm feeling pretty happy about this It's going to receive good sunshine And there's plenty of space for it Okay, so let's get digging Okay, so we're going to dig a hole as deep as the root zone on the seedling and another little bit more. So we're going to, we're going to dig a hole, a whole spade, head deep. Okay, so the Chitoki's in. So just to recap, we've planted a old growth species, this Chitoki, into this four-year-old native planting. Um, we've removed two three meter tall Kanuka to make space for this um, Chitoki, and it's resulted in a gap of about two meters across. Okay, so it's about two meters by three meters tall. I'm pretty happy with how it's gone. Um, for now I'm going to go and get some water to water this seedling in and get on with planting the next one. So remember it's important to water the tree in so that you get good contact between the soil and the roots. There's no air cavities. So do that, um, give it a generous water after planting. So this is one example of enrichment planting, planting into a planted native forest. There are other ways of doing this um, by establishing seed islands at larger scales, um, planting these on grids through different sorts of vegetation, different sorts of manipulations. So it's a pretty exciting part of restoration to be able to bring these old growth tree species back. So if you're going to be attempting this at larger scales, then the approach would definitely be different. So, and I'd love to hear from you if you've got questions. Um, just don't hesitate to get in touch and I'll give you some advice, okay? Look, thanks very much for joining me on this little video about enrichment planting. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Remember to subscribe. Um, that way you'll be notified when the next video comes out. And if you've got people, you know, friends or people you know that you think would be interested, please share this with them as well. But for now, thanks very much and I'll see you next time.